Hi, I'm Olivia Rackham. Uh, I'm a novelist, a writer, and you probably know me from uh, my books and some of my fan fictions, probably. But I'm doing a series here on prayer, prayers in the Bible, specific prayers by specific people, and um, talking about their their responses and um, what we can learn about prayer and God from these specific prayers. So far, we started out with Cain, because his was the first prayer, Cain. And oddly, God answered yes to that prayer. And then the next was, a. I didn't plan on that. I was out of order. I jumped way to the New Testament and it did a little bit of a study on Mary and Joseph and just their attitude towards um, accepting what God asked them to do, which was in a form, it was, um, for Mary, it was a exchange of, and she asked for some clarification. So interestingly, that concept applies in the one I'm going to talk about now, which is we're going back to the next one. The next specific prayer after Cain is Abram. Now, early on, earlier, when uh, God told Abraham, Abram to pick up and move when he was 75 years old and his wife was quite a bit younger than, no, not that much younger than him, but I, I don't know what, 10 years younger, maybe. Um, she was still past the age of having kids at that point if the normal clock works the same it might not have been she might have been on the edge of it she might have been on the edge of not being able to have children because people lived a little bit longer back then um but yeah he was 75 and god said that he would make him into a great nation he would lead him into a promised land and he would make him into a great nation, which is a little vague. <laughs> it's all pretty vague. I'm going to show you to this land and you're going to be a great nation. Soon. Okay. You know, he basically had no idea what's going on. So he went. Um, and then the, the actual prayer comes. In Genesis 15. So, um, Abram had to go beat some people up because his nephew Lot had been captured. So, Abram had to go rescue him. And then he had a meeting with this mysterious priest named Melchizedek which many scholars believe was Jesus. Isn't that a cool thought? It was Jesus. Um, because he brought out bread and wine. And then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. You don't just give somebody a tenth of everything. That's, that's a tithe offering. I think it was Jesus. Because then, you know, they refer to Jesus in that way. And, um, so, it's chapter 15 starts with, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Get back to that. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me? Since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. So, some time has passed since, you know, since this I will make you into a great nation thing. Years have passed, and Abram is saying, well, um, 
I'm your, you know, God's like, I'm your great reward. Abraham's like, Abraham's like, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't know what you mean. Because everything that I have is going to be given to some guy that I'm not even related to. It's a, a servant. I'm going to have to give all of my stuff to my servant. I don't even have a close enough relative really to give all this stuff to. And here's God's answer. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. God credited it to Abraham, Abram as righteousness. And they continue their conversation. He's like, you know, God says, you're going to take, I brought you out of the land of Ur and the Chaldeans to give you this land to pay, take possession of it. But Abram said, oh, sovereign Lord, how can I know? that I will gain possession of it. So the Lord said to him, bring me a heifer. And so he makes a covenant vowing on his own self. Like he, God makes the covenant with him on himself. He doesn't make Abraham, Abram do anything. I keep saying that it's him. He vows on his own self, which means he has to do it. Um, so there's more clarification there. And Abram is not afraid to ask God questions. And because he had said, I'm going to make you into a great nation. What does that mean? I mean, he left. He did what he was supposed to do. And it's interesting that he said, don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. You're a very great reward. You sort of wonder where that came from. What? Afraid. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm just using my imagination here as a writer. He had just come out of battle. And everybody knows that if you fight and kill and fight and kill and you have some PTSD from that, um, people have bad dreams when they're involved in violence. I wonder if Abram had a dream or if he was couldn't sleep because he thought to himself, what if I had been killed? You know, what if some stray arrow had come out and got me and, and that would have been it. And so much for these promises. And how long until something like that happens again? Uh, I have to protect my family. I have to do something like that. And something happens to me and, and I die, and then nothing comes of these promises. And so God said, don't be afraid. I am your shield and your reward. Um, so stick with me, and it'll all be okay. And Abram was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. How is it going to happen? You haven't given me any kids. And you know that this is the thing that we want the most. We want at least one son. But how is that going to work? And we know earlier that Abram went into Egypt. And. Well, th this is this is interesting to me. So Abram went to Egypt earlier after God had promised that he was going to be made into a great nation and because there's a famine and they went to Egypt and Abram was afraid that they were going to kill him and take his wife Sarai away from him because she was so beautiful and so he said, 
call yourself my sister instead of my, you know, my wife so that they won't kill me. And I, I think I've heard somebody talk about this. It's also, it's something that I thought was weird growing up. Like, this is an old lady. She's not ancient. I Not, you know, but she's probably 70 at this point. 75, maybe. And Abram is worried that the king is going to take, that Pharaoh is going to take a 70-year-old woman away to be in his harem. And, you know, it's like, as a kid, you just blow past that. But then as you get older, I don't know, we should think about stuff like that. Like, what the heck? Why is that? What, what king looks up at a 70-year-old woman who could be his grandmother, <laughs> probably, or his mother, and say, gee, I want her for my harem. When he's, it's full of young princesses. We have to assume something kind of interesting. If, if Sarai was going to have a baby, and was going to live long enough to raise him and take care of him and not just immediately break down. All you gals who have had babies know how what hard work it is to just exist while you're pregnant. You are tired, uh, you know, you're feel hormonal, crazy, hard to sleep, you know, da, da, da. and then once the baby's born, you get no sleep and you're up and then you're crying and then, you know, da, 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 da. and once the kid is one year old and two year old and suddenly they're running around and you're like, don't put that in your mouth and watch out for that. And you know, you know, again, no sleep, <laughs> no resting. You are, you're on the move. And, um, if you hand your own kid off to you know, perhaps your 60-year-old mom, you yourself, um, or your, you know, your mom is older than that, your mom eventually is like, I'll kick this kid back. I've got to take a nap. I'm not young anymore. I can't do this. So think about if she's 70 or 75 years old. God has to renew her youth. If she's going to get pregnant, first of all, because she would have had to, if she, she went through menopause, she can't get pregnant. So he has to rewind her. He has to take her back and give her her youth back physically in order for her to be able to conceive, to carry to term, to give birth safely, and then to nurture this child all the way um, I don't think she died until Isaac was 40. <sighs> so, and also, Abram maybe wasn't aware of it, maybe wasn't looking in the mirror enough, but he said, tell them that I'm your brother, not your father. Because if he was still looking all old and crunchy, then, and she was young and beautiful looking, they would have just said, well, this is my daughter. So he must not have looked so good, so bad either. So good. He must not have looked so bad either. He was probably young, youth thinning as well. But since it was a gradual process, he probably didn't really notice. He was just getting younger so that he could be the protector and so that he could also manage to get his wife pregnant um because age related things don't always work but if you're young so 
I always wondered about that. Like, what the heck is up with Pharaoh? Why does he want some grandma for his harem? She wasn't, she didn't look like a grandma. And Abram didn't look like a grandpa. They didn't look their age. Because God was reversing that. But Abram didn't know quite how that, that was what was going to happen. Because that's what he asked. He was like, how, how's this working? Because, you know, I don't see. I don't see. I, I don't have any kids. So I don't, I don't know where this nation's coming from that you're talking about. Um, and then God's like, well, I'm going to give you a kid. I'm going to give you physically a child. Hmm. And then Abram's like, well, I need more info. He's like, well, okay. Let me show you. Let me give you an illustration. So he had that good conversation to show, look at the stars. And then Abram believed. And it was righteousness. Which is later, you know, that's why he's called the father of faith. Now, we don't know anything about what happened, what Abram was like before he was called. You can ask the question, why did God... Um, wait so long to deliver this promise to why did, why did Isaac, why, why was it so late in coming? It felt like late. What was the what? And, and um, I don't think God delays things just to make you suffer. Um, And I don't know what Abram's relationship with God was like before. He, who knows, who knows what he uh, went through, what he was thinking about, what he was doing, any, any of these things until he, he was 75. We don't know. Um, we don't know what Sarai's relationship with God was. Um, Could have been that God was trying to get their attention before that. Um, and, and he was too distracted and stuff was going on. Could have been that um, there was something physically wrong with Sarai. She might have physically been barren. Or maybe she had cysts or different things. And God was um, using the time to heal her. And to teach them. So there could have been that going on. Of of some something. We don't, we don't really know. There's not enough detail. Um, but, but to teach them. Uh, and talk with them. And spend time with them. Um, yeah, it's kind of. It's kind of mysterious about um you know that time span there and but abram was righteous because of his faith not because he did something not because he made sacrifices, not because he did sacraments of any kind, not because he flogged himself for his sins, not because he did this many prayers or gave away this much money or um, said magic words or was perfect because he wasn't. He made mistakes. He lied. <laughs> he lied to Pharaoh's face. He lied to Pharaoh's face. And, um, he slept with a servant girl because his wife fooled him too. Because God did say it's going to come out of your body. You're right there. He said, you're, it's going to come out of your body. So maybe he then 
thought to himself, oh, well, it, it's me, but not my wife. But the problem is, is that, yeah, he says, the sun coming from your own body will be the air. I'm going to just double check that real quick. Ah, so, yeah. So he made the, he made the covenant with him and said, your descendants, I give this land from the river Egypt to the great river Euphrates, the land of the, blah, 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 blah. so I give you all this stuff. And then Sarai says, she had an Egyptian maidservant. She said, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my maidservant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram was living, Kenna took, Sarai took, Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband. And there are a couple of things that matter with this here. Sarah spoke death. She spoke an untruth into the situation, which was God has kept me from having children. Nowhere did God say, I'm going to keep Sarai from having children. She put that in her head. When in fact, God was prepping her whole body and, and Abram's body for a baby. And that was happening. But she said, God has kept me from having. And so take this side woman. Well, that's not a child of a wife. That. See, so Abram and Sarai are married. They're married. So they're one flesh, husband and wife, a covenant that God recognizes because he created that between Adam and Eve. He made you husband, you wife, one flesh. And so that's what God was setting up, husband wife promise but sarai introduced an adulteress basically he she wanted her husband to commit adultery in order for this to happen in order because she she didn't have a good opinion of god at that moment she had a bad opinion of God based on her fear and doubt that it wasn't going to happen. Like that, that it wasn't going to happen in her body. She couldn't get past her own. And it was very hard for women back then, not who didn't have babies. Um, other women looked at them like, What's wrong with you? Does your husband not love you? Or you're under a curse. You know, your 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 God doesn't isn't blessing you. And so she thought she was under a curse when God had said the exact opposite. And God wanted that to happen within the marriage of Abram and Sarai. He didn't want adultery. That's what this was. With Hagar. Here, have a slave. So they're treating. He didn't ask Hagar if this is what she wanted. So they're treating her like a piece of property. Sarah is treating her like a piece of property and shunting her towards her husband. That's not, that doesn't go. So I'm not going to get into Hagar yet because that's for another one. But 
Sarai and Abram had two different attitudes at this point. Abram believed, but you can see how Abram got uh, hung up on this technicality because it said, um, God said, the, the child will come out of your body. So Abram was like, yes, I believe that I will have a son. Me, me, my body will have a son. But he listened then to his wife who did not believe God's good opinion. Uh, like, uh, she, didn't, she didn't have a good opinion of God. And she didn't have that connection and relationship with God. So she... Well, and we all get that way. We're all like, you going to do this or not? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you can't do it. Maybe you can't do it. Like, we will say that out loud, but like, it's niggles in the back of your head. Like, well, or maybe I heard wrong. Maybe I thought that's what I heard from God, but maybe, maybe that wasn't right. So, I don't know what to do now. I got to think of something, but, but maybe I've never, you know, like she could say, I've never seen this happen. I've never seen God do a miracle. I've maybe heard about them. But I've never seen it myself. So maybe he does miracles. Maybe not. So, but I do know that um, I don't want all of my husband's things to, including me, if he dies, to be gone, to go off to some strange relative or a servant then I will then be subject to a servant because I am property myself so wouldn't it be better to have a son to um take care of us and so that all of our things and, and me included can go with this child instead of being scattered to the winds like all of her all of her fears are just talking to her all the time about the real life situation that is in her face and she is scared of being old and alone and in shame she's afraid of being childless and alone and old and that's a legit fear for a lot of people. I think that's a real fear for some people. Old, alone, childless. Nobody to take care of you when you're old. And uh, so she thought, this is, how, this is how I can maneuver this to make it happen. And Abram, since he was like, well, maybe, maybe that's how it's going to happen. Because, you know, Hagar's a lot younger, and so there, there's a better possibility of her becoming pregnant. And God said it was coming from my body. And if my wife doesn't, if, if maybe God told my wife, maybe because she walked up and said, God has kept me from having children. Well, maybe, maybe she heard from God, and maybe she knows. And, and so let's go with this. But you notice uh, Abram didn't ask God. He'd been asking all those questions before, but he didn't ask him this time. And God would have told him what was going on if he had come to ask. If he had said, oh, 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 oh. let's just stop for a second and let's ask. Let's you and me, wife, before we do this, which will put a rift between us and cause all kinds of problems let's go let's go to god and ask some more specifics and can't hurt i mean we're friends it's like yeah god and i we're friends so i'm gonna go talk to him because he doesn't get mad at me when i ask him questions 
God never gets mad at Abram. He talks to him like regular folks. Would have been so much better. Because Hagar did have a baby boy named Ishmael. And the Ishmaelites went on to become the Philistines. And there's still a people now that are fighting Israel, that are descendants of Ishmael. So it's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, they're still fighting. So, I would say the question, the, the big lesson of this is when God tells you something and he doesn't give you all the details, don't assume, especially if an opportunity a, presents itself that is not in line with uh, your gut feeling or something you know that that is expressly um against because like abram didn't have the scriptures he couldn't like he couldn't look at this and go whoop um all he knew were family family stories so at, he he really should have just so God says something doesn't give you all the details don't assume press in and ask and God will reveal the way that he talks to you specifically um he talks to each person in a different way Sometimes he talks through dreams. Sometimes he talks through visions. Sometimes he talks through people see repeating numbers over and over. And so they look it up. Somehow they look it up as a reference or they look it up in Strong's Concordance. They, um, or it reminds them of something from their life when they were little or, or, or music or, um, any, lots of different things, lots of different things, depending upon who you are. So you kind of have to expect him to answer you, expect him to answer. And he will. Open your mind, your imagination to the fact that he's talking to you. But ask. He will not burn you up. Ask of questions. Ask the questions. I... God gets irritated at disbelief, like incredulity, like, oh, yeah, right, that kind of attitude. Uh, he's offended that, like, excuse me, I know who you're talking to, but, but people who are inquisitive and wanting to be more involved, he'll answer. Go ask him. So that kind of meandered around that that's the, that was the next one I wanted to talk about. So I will see you next time.